To whom much is given, much is required. Part of that requirement is sharing. Culture is the heartbeat within our lives, and it's at the core of so many things. While we live in a time when we are starving for wisdom, I welcome you to your wisdom retreat at Culture Raises Us. Yes, my guys, so good to see uh, today's guest, uh, Joe Fresh Goods is, for those who don't know, um, one of the more sought-after designers um, and creative directors within the fashion space right now. Uh, he's worked with the likes of a McDonald's, AT&T, the Bear, Chicago Bears, and New Balance, uh, to name a few. We, we met some years ago <laughs> under some very, very interesting circumstances that I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on during this conversation. And, and I'm really, really super Happy to have you here, my friend. Uh, real talk uh, for a number of reasons. And again, we'll, we'll get into that. But we always start these episodes off with, when you hear culture, what does that mean to you? Um, first off, Absolutely. I want to say thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. You're a good friend. I very appreciate you dearly. So it's an my honor guy. to be on your platform. Um, culture, culture. Culture is one of those buzzwords where sometimes I, I, I don't really even like it's just like culture and the diversity right. and oh, stop. Um, but you know, culture, honestly, man, like, um, it represents a group of people. You know what I'm saying? It's culture can, you know, um, I actually, with that being said, sometimes I have a hard time def uh, defining what culture means. But overall, it's the way we dance. It's the way we tie our shoe. It's the how we eat our food. Um. I saw this interesting post on social media floating around where it was like yeah. 20 different hot sauces. And it was just like, everybody, I use this type of hot sauce on chicken. I use this type of hot sauce on fish. And I'm just like, that's culture. Because everybody can see that it's the same thing, but Dang. we all view it differently. So, you know, culture, culture is how a group of people, uh, how we do our thing, you know, that's it, it, whether it be black culture, whether it be related to a religion, whether it be related to where you're from, um, it just represents how people do no, their thing, it. you know I what I'm saying, it. in general. Well, you know what? Um, I've had the pleasure, again, of knowing you for some time, but for those of uh, the listeners who, who haven't, give them a little sense about Joe Fresh Goods. Who are you, bro? Yeah, um, so Joe Fresh Goods. I'm born and raised on the west side of Chicago. Um, you know, West Side, we have Twister Lupe. Damn, what? Well, Y'all got a whole where, Chicago's well, a, a hotbed, bro. Well, well, yeah, but we're very, um, people don't know this, but they're not from Chicago, but we're very like, um, uh, like, because when I, growing up for me, <laughs> I grew, I stayed on the West Side. So I didn't never, I never had a reason to go on the South Side unless to visit some, you know, my, my grandmother when she lived out there. But, you know, born and raised on the West Side of Chicago. Um, I am a entrepreneur. I am a designer. I'm a creative director. All those cool buzzwords that everybody say. Um, I uh, really, really, really give back to community, yep. which I know we're going to touch on. Um, I employ. I I inspire. I um, you know that's that's me. You know I've been doing this. Damn, can I Absolutely. say twenty years almost? Damn, I'm almost. I, I've been I've been waiting for the wait. Yeah, I could. Damn, I'm so. twenty years in. I can say. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this since I was 14. Um, it started off as a way to yeah, make huh. some money as a hobby. You know, I, I fell in love. I guess I tell this story is recently, like I fell in love with the color pink, as you see in most of my the footwear projects I, I have coming out. It's yeah, always heck. a pink shoe. Um, but when, when Cameron first started wearing color pink, I think I was like 15, 14, 15, or some shit like that. Dipset was running running around Harlem and BT and all that. It was just a thing. So basically, I couldn't find anything pink in the market. So um, it wasn't like, I think it was like a white socks pink hat that I found at the tops and bottoms. But before, I just, I had to make my own stuff. So it kind of started off as a way to make my own clothes. People in high school started um, liking what I wear. And I started to sell it. And here I am, so you know. No, what's beautiful, a lot yeah, of years rightfully like, so. Yeah. And I had no clue about the inspiration behind pink. And now that I think back at every collection or every yeah. moment, even when working again, there was a pink element. Yeah, I, I, it's just me. You know, it, 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 it dates back to me being a kid and the pink being related to a thing that's for women. But I'm like, yo, I love pink. I love how pink and green look together. So I can't shake that. That's why a lot of my projects, it has always 
a dash of pink as yeah, paying homage to me as look a where kid. that came from, where you said Cam. And think about the time in which Cam mm -hmm. did that. Yep. I mean, that was not, pink was not a prominent color within our palette, so to say. So I love yep. that you've taken yep. that and, and yep. run with it. And you know what? I, I've literally watched your career and even listening to this point about the pink piece, you know, grow very organically over the years. Um, from seeing you do pop-ups mm -hmm. at music festivals to then having your own major, like you say, footwear drops that literally put the industry in a frenzy. But throughout this, you know, uh, uh -huh. this culture of what I call evolution that I see in you and that you've created and that you've, you've always remained very genuine, which, which I think is a huge value and trait. And I, I, I want to applaud you for that, um, real talk. And, you know, I know that fashion Thanks. obviously plays a very, very significant role in shaping culture as we know it. I mean, again, look how it influenced you from back in the day with the pink piece um, and Cam. But with all the uh -huh. collections and the brands mm -hmm. and the companies um, that you've worked with over the years, was there a particular moment where you realized just how big and instrumental this fashion culture was to overall culture as we know it? Man, good, great question. Great question. Um, it's been so many different moments and like key points that like made me think that. I think as of recently, not as of recently, this was like maybe six years ago, but um, hmm, you know, I could I could take it back getting my first cease and desist, which is just like wow, how do a big a big brand like Champion right. know that I exist? Then I then I can take it to doing a bootleg Kanye t shirt. And getting a cease and desist from his people, cease and desist from his people, like damn, exists. How do they even know I exist? So you have those moments, you have those moments where it's just like, wow, I'm making, you know, I'm, I'm making some new um, airlines, and I'm, my shit is spreading. But I think as of recently, I think um, I don't know what year it was. I had to like fact check this. I thought like we stopped talking, but like I, well, I dropped and... the Thank You Obama collection. Um, and retrospect, I try yep. not to get into politics. That's that's grown me now. That has a you know a lot to lose, and I, my views are my views. And but I think you know, I, early on in my career, I really prided myself on just. I used to call myself like the hood mm. CNN, like fashion CNN. So certain things were happening in life, and I would just like right. make a shirt about it quick. Uh, that was like my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like if if anything happened in pop culture, Joe was going to make and a funny shirt around it quick. And it was like pre fast fashion. Now it's like, that's kind of frowned upon. And I actually don't like shit like that. But like, that's how I actually came up. It was just like document things right. happening and then fucking turn around and making a shirt out of it. So, um, you know, in Chicago, I can't speak for everywhere else around the world. I can't speak for the politics, you know. But what I will say is the day that Obama got elected, the most Man. lit I've ever seen Chicago. I mean, I I wasn't I was a shorty when the Bulls was winning the championships, but when Obama won, it was like thousands of people in the park. It was like everybody was dapping moment. each other up. It was like it was a fucking moment. Are you fucking shitting me? It was like, holy shit, everybody just man. So like again, you can speak for the politics and the policies and what have came out of there. That's you know yep. for a, another conversation, but you know, when uh, he was out of office, I was like, you know what, let me just make a time capsule of his time in office with a little Shreeware, you know, um, okay. uh, capsule. And I didn't think none of it. Now I'm way more detailed with legal stuff and all that, but I was like, you know what, let me make a, a Malia t-shirt. Let me make a, a, a t-shirt paying homage uh, to Michelle and um, her going to Whitney Young in Chicago. I just, I, I really put my foot into every little piece. And Chance, one of my really good friends, he modeled it. And I put it out. And it yeah, changed yeah. my life, you know? I think, uh, I don't want to talk about money and financials, like, too much. But I think this moment in my life online, I made, like, $10,000 every hour for, wow. like, two days. Boop, 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 boop. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck. And it taught me it Man. taught me fulfillment it taught me Nim nimbleness moments. nimbleness it taught me yeah like, oh this is how you run a business 
So, and um, it, it went into the right hands. Um, um, Malia ended up getting a T-shirt and loving it. I didn't get, I didn't get a season assist from the Obamas. Um, it was a great moment, and it taught me about investment because that was that was the moment in time where I realized, like, damn, I don't need an investor. I just Whoa. need, I, I just need ideas. So I think that was the moment that I had in my life where just, okay, cool. I have, I have. 80,000 orders to fulfill. I have, it was just a lot. I learned a, a lot about business dropping that collection. And that was the first time where I was just like, okay, cool. This no, is I, my you know job. What? I love that real. you said that I, I realized that I didn't need investments I, because I had amazing ideas. But yep. I, I think the other piece that you also had was the ability to execute. You, you executed on that mm -hmm. idea yep. in the moment um, from a chronicling something that was so big, not just in Chicago, but just in general, but you being from there, that was like the epicenter. So it made it even more of a moment. Yeah. And it, it leads me to, you know, asking, you know, how did growing up in Chicago influence actually all of your approach to design? Oh man, you know, I think Chicago, you know, we were very, yeah. we, we get flat, you know, um, we, it's a situation where I feel like a lot of the things that I'm doing now, especially when footwear stems from me growing up in Chicago. And I think I needed a confidence that, oh, we all grew up like this. No matter if you're from Harlem, whether you're from uh, South Central, whether you're uh -huh. from you know New Orleans, a lot of us grew up the same way, just different territories. And I think for me, man, just Chicago is just like, you know, obviously uh -huh. we grew up in Jordan City, you know what I'm saying? That's like, my background, loving everything that the Bulls and Jordan and Nike and what that means to the city. But like, you know, I, I grew up in the Austin neighborhood, which is the uh, second most dangerous neighborhood in Chicago. So, Absolutely. you know, what comes with that. Uh, and I'm, I, I hate when my mom watches my interviews. She'd be like, boy, you, by mind, you didn't grow up in no terrible household, so don't do that. Everybody be like, I grew up from the gutter. <laughs> I did not grow up from the gutter. You know what I'm saying? I just grew up around all of that and it, it you know it was stuff that you know we gang violence and 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 all of that that we was around but you know shout out to my family um you know we grew up in a good household and just like the shape me just learning how i don't know man like we had madison and pulaski so that was like that was an that. epicenter right. of like shopping and getting flat yeah yeah so we had tops and bottoms and just like the lark man alive and all that stuff so it was just like Getting fly, you know what I'm saying? Understanding the importance of a lot of the urban brands that was around. Um, yeah, Chicago was shaped, you know, everything I do now is based off Chicago. A lot of my storytelling, everything I do now is rooted in storytelling. So a lot of my storytelling now just Absolutely. all back, goes back and you, to Chicago. And you talked about family, right, playing a role. Um, and I'm wondering, are there other people mm -hmm. who early on played a significant positive role in getting your work out into the world? Oh man, yes. Um, so again, I think earlier I touched on like how Chicago sometimes can be so divided. You know, I grew up on the West Side, and there wasn't really a reason for me to go out south growing up. But um, I will say, what changed my yeah. life was leaders. Corey, um, amazing, I know amazing Corey, human being, he's, man. He's no, he's no. Corey, I'm <laughs> shouting you out on the platform. So stop. We are shouting you out, Corey. You're you. an amazing human being, uh, bro. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Shout out to Corey Gilkey and leaders. Um, you know, I, I always thought I got flat, but you know, going to you know, I think my uncle came home one day with a with a Monopoly t shirt. I don't know what brand made it, but I'm just like, What the hell did you get that t shirt? It wasn't Sean John, it wasn't Fat Farm, it it, it wasn't a major yet. It wasn't you know, I could, I, you can get that you can get that anywhere. I was like, yo, that's a cool shirt. Where'd you get that from? And he told me leaders and the rest is history. You know, I started working for mm -hmm. Fashion Geek in Chicago, which at the time was a really, really big brand. Um, then after that, I started working at Nike Town and Leaders. So, um, but I will say, you know, shout out to my OGs, uh, my good friends, uh, Corey Vic. Gilkey, Vic Lloyd. I cannot be remiss Vic. not saying something without Vic. So, you know, these are moments. This this is when I turned like 19, 20. Um, I started to get my, maybe a little earlier mm -hmm. than about 17, 18, I would say. Um, I discovered a new world and a new language and just like, I was just like, and so intrigued by fashion from yeah, that point and of so, view. Yeah, and so, and I, say it again? Black Reaper. Black Reaper. So, 
so my, my bad about that. So being a black retailer, that's what I, I meant. To, that's how I meant to end that off. Like being a black retailer selling cool shit that wasn't too urban. You know, I didn't know what streetwear really was, but I just I know this wasn't what I was used to seeing. So I think walking into leaders, seeing that it was black on, seeing it was cool brands that wouldn't only spot that sold this stuff in the city. So yeah, and you that, know what? That and now that I life. think about it, you know, when you think about what Corey created back then, leaders was a very different door in that he had such a great eye and still does for merchandising, right? Like the yeah. brands that he brought yeah. in was yeah. such a diverse mix. You know, and I think he, I think I remember going in there and mm -hmm. he had like Jabot, but then he had, I think he had an SB account, which, which was yep. kind of unheard yep, of. Yep, so yep. the the melting of all these worlds, I could see being such a huge influence mm -hmm. for you, and now how that correlates mm -hmm. into what you do from a fat from a design standpoint. But I I definitely have to applaud to your point, mm -hmm. you know, Corey for being the visionary that he is and creating the environment that he created. You can only have greatness come mm -hmm. from that and so I, I love that you talk about that mm -hmm. seed that was planted there and what it did for you and you kind of mentioned yeah a no, lot no. of people get bigger i'm sorry a lot of people i say there's a lot of people get bigger and uh i see it happen without saying uh, i don't want to i'm glad <laughs> i'm not drinking i would have well but people get bigger and sometimes they forget where they came from so as i continue to grow you know i cannot I'll be a bogus ass motherfucker if I didn't give thanks to That's everybody right. that played a part in me right now. So I think they just celebrated twenty right or twenty five years, which is crazy. You know how, yeah, uh, Absolutely. you know how crazy it is in retail. So, uh, you know, so I just want to make sure I give a big shout out to leaders and 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 Vic and what they built, Ty, Vic, Mike Hunnitz, uh, because that they shaped the whole generation of people in my age group. That yeah, they they were super inspiring, and I think they too have a huge focus and emphasis on community. And you you, you mentioned that earlier, yeah. and I'd love for you to talk about the role that community plays and played in your journey within Chicago and beyond. Yeah, community, man. Another buzzword that <laughs> I love and hate, but it is what it is. Um, okay, so, I mean, you know, I'm just really big on just making sure I give back, you know. Um, I'm really <laughs> big on making sure I'm present. You know, I'm really big on making sure that I hire within the community. Um, I, I, I I, would say, I think as I've gotten older, I have two kids now, so I think um, what I like to tell people is that you can look back at my catalog. That's why I'm not one of those people that um get another type of success right. and delete my Instagram. So you guys think I only came from, I started off here. I'm probably going to start deleting now that I'm saying this, but like you can literally go back on Instagram, keep scrolling and you can see where I should. started off. At. They should be able to for see that. They got to see the journey. Yeah. But I, you know how it is. Like I'm about to drop an album. So let me delete all yeah. my old stuff and just like make, you know, uh, I don't really believe in that. Cause I want people to, I want these kids to know that, you know, that you Absolutely. can you can make it, you know. So I just think, you know, it's important for me to just be present in the city. I think I'm very proud that, um, you know, I have a, I have about 20 employees now. Which That's is awesome. Crazy when I say that loud to think, um, I've still, you know, I've been able to grow this brand in Chicago. You know, I didn't have to run. This is no shots to nobody. I didn't have Fair to head. run to New York or L.A. You know, I did this in my hometown and. Um, so that's another big thing I'm, I'm proud of. And just, you know, I grew up in CPS, a Chicago public school system. And it's just like, I just think these kids need recognizable, yep. relatable heroes. Um, and for me, it's just like, you know, I want to, I want to use my platform for good. I think sometimes, um, it's a heavy, con it's a, it, it, it weighs on me when I see people lined up for Why? my shoes. Um, I think it's two part. It's two parts to this, right? Okay, first part is the pandemic, right? Um, I'm like, fuck. If I can, if I can have, if I can sell 300 teas in a couple minutes, what That's else right. can I do with that power? You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, during the pandemic, was a lot of businesses suffering. Um, so I think that's when I was like, okay, fuck it, I got to do something. So I think in 2020, that's when I decided to, hey, I'm about to make this T-shirt. This T-shirt goes to this cause. You know, I did another program where I raised, I had my daughter 
you know, paint, some, uh, support black businesses. Um, I got that vectorized. I put that on the shirt. And I think I raised like 20 grand and I like split that up between like hey. five different businesses in Chicago. So I was doing stuff like that, <laughs> fucking up my taxes. <laughs> uh, you know, I just have a good heart. I didn't understand the magnitude of what I was doing and, and what that was causing. So I decided to turn my good deeds into a nonprofit, you know, so now I have community goods. Uh, we've been we've, we've been a 501c3 mm -hmm. for about two and a half years now. Um, and that's my baby. You know what I'm saying? I think, um, uh, again, I'm very proud of the growth. I wouldn't have think in a million years that I would have a, a nonprofit and be able to, like, use my platform to to, you know, to have brands help me make change and do and, and, and just reinvest back in my community. Um, so that's been going on for two and a half years. I just, um, a quick plug, I, uh, we have um, Michelle Clark High School on the west side of Chicago. Um, I built a, um, me and the Blackhawks, <laughs> let me not say the Black, we and the Blackhawks, we built a school store inside um, with just some of the stuff, goodies and stuff. So it just incentivized kids to good deeds, good grades, perfect attendance and you know, it's just it's just cool stuff like that. You know, I want to make sure that you know I, I'm gonna feel weird if I'm just no, selling you're, you're stuff. No, you're to not. You're not a community. transactionalist. You know that's a that's a yeah. No, and again, you know what? You know what did it? I'll tell you what did it. I dropped um, shit. I dropped this shoe. I okay. dropped this shoe in 2020, right? This was a plan. It was just sitting behind me. Um, I did that in Garfield Garfield Park in Chicago. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of all this raffle stuff. I'm. Uh, raffles and um you know what i'm saying you got to do three <laughs> flips to get a shoe and all that let me bring back let me bring back first come first serve fuck it let me do it in my hood yeah Woo. i announced the address i announced the address to where the pop-up was at the morning of i did everything right um at 10 a.m it 2000. was like two thousand people outside and yep for a new balance shoe uh, but I didn't think that. I didn't think it was going to be that. So I was underprepared, understaffed, and it went terrible. But what I want to say is being able to – having that power Brand scared head. me. You know what I'm saying? And it just made me – it made me want to just be more careful with Your gift. my Your uh, gift. power and influence. Right? So if I can have 2,000 people lined up for a sneaker, imagine what I can do with that type of energy. So I think that's the single-handedly big thing that kind of changed me and, and maybe me be, you know, um, obviously as my pie chart, I'm design storytelling, but like a lot of that shit is community. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure that a lot of my design lingo and a lot of my, uh, what I'm trying to do is yeah, intentional. Was, that, and that's give it the back word I was going to use it is very intentional and very purpose driven. I think you went through a journey mm -hmm. of realizing that your gifts were to be used for something way bigger than you and way bigger than just a transaction. And I'm so glad you said that because mm -hmm. the level of hero that you become becomes even more significant than that of you just pushing a bunch of capsule collections, footwear drops. It's, it's way, mm -hmm. way yep. deeper for you right now and way more impactful, which is so awesome. And, and with that, as you go through that journey, I wonder who you turn to though for guidance in those moments, right? Because you you can you can learn that on your on your own, but there's also moments where some people got to kind of guide you and help you. Do you have like a a brain trust or a you know a um a, a group that you can or individuals that you can count on to kind of help guide you through this? Trusted editors, I almost call them. You know what? I'm, I I get asked this, and I'm just like. I, I... I don't want to make it sound like I'm forgetting somebody, yeah. but I don't think I do. <laughs> like I have certain people, you know, like shout out to Corey Gilkey. It's a lot of stuff. He's been in business with, you know, 30 years now. So it's certain things I can ask him, but I don't know, man, it's something beautiful. But there's something beautiful about yeah, yeah. continuing to learn, you know, uh, I don't look at my staff like coworkers. I don't look at my staff like employees. That's what I meant to say. Uh, they're like, Andy. they're my brain trust. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I have, yeah. Like I don't really, cause what I'm doing is kind of unorthodox. You know what I'm saying? Like we're doing really well. You know, I'm, I'm in the big market, but not the two, the, you know, the big, you know, you're the like, coast. A, you're, the, you're the meat, you're um, the meat to the sandwich. Like I, yeah. Yeah. I have nobody to answer to, you know, I, I don't, 
Like I, I, I own a hundred percent of my company. Um, how I tack collaborations, I don't have no manager. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just have a good lawyer, a good team, um, and just, you know, a good nice family system, I would say. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I don't really um I, I wish I did. And I'm like, you know, I have certain people in my life when it's about real estate questions or tax things, but like I mean, for the most part, I, I got a good accountant, I got a good lawyer. So like it's not, you know, those that's my team, you know. It's really my team. We're family. Yeah, yeah exactly. How would you ca categorize, you know, your approach to design and how has it evolved as you become even more experienced as a designer over the years? Man, I think it's, yep. for me, it's storytelling first. Uh, what's the story behind this? And, you know, so I figure out what story I'm trying um, to tell. Um, then after that, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. color color story you know and then it goes to design you know i'm I'm very big on quietly pushing mm. black history on people without without right. black flagging you to death you know what i'm saying um uh, i think i just did a great i'm very 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 proud of my vans collection i just dropped because it talks about the green book and it talks about black people and um what is leisure and you know because i think um Real life experiences. I'm all over the world. I'm in Japan having a pop up shop. Um, I'm I'm in Paris having a pop up shop. I'm 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 all over the world, and it's like I'm not gonna say. It's, um, I'm starting to feel like I don't know. Some I'm just very fucking grateful, and sometimes I like think to myself like, damn man, it wasn't no. like this seventy years ago. You know what I'm saying? It was like the beaches that was designated only black mm -hmm. people go to these beaches. Only considering these restaurants. So the Vans collection I just did was a great example of me. Like, if you know, you know. Every little detail. The T-shirt bag was the green book bag. You know, it said um, no aggravation without. It was just like I do a lot of things where, and maybe I'll tell this story once my career is over with, but it's a shit Man. ton of Easter eggs and all my stuff. Everything I do is like hidden. You got to look at the pocket. You got to open up the sleeve. It's a message to my daughter. Um, but a lot of things I do is just like, okay, storytelling, store, this is my storytelling, this is the color theory, this is my hidden messages, all right, let's work on clothes now. Let's put all this stuff up, let's, now let's work on actual clothes. And I think now, I think like that, coming up, no, how absolutely. can I have viral moments? No, it's I even richer now. Be, you know what I'm saying? I, Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I just want to go back to the statement, everybody just watched me grow up. I've been making tea since I was 14. Um, and 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 now I'm thirty. Yeah, I'm thirty six. <laughs> but um, and um, so I just think that people just been um, watching me grow. You know, what I'm saying one of my first um, fuck man. I just sounds so really messy and just terrible. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna say this. But I had I had a yeah I had a, a beanie and you people can this. I had a beanie that came out in 2009. Um, very vulgar vulgar beanie, but. That went viral, and I'm just like some of my older stuff. I'm like, God damn, I can't believe I made that. Exactly. But also, and you were in a different, different place. Time, I would say, yes. But I'm just proud that everybody and you know what? watched me grow Part up. Part of the growing up is the evolution, and that's what I started with, right? And why you exemplify yeah. for me this culture of evolution. And when I hear you talk about your storytelling, which I know is the richness that you're very passionate about and comes to in everything that you do, there's a beauty of you are almost like a modern day educator. And what I mean by that is, you know, when we were coming up, there weren't a lot of outlets to learn outside of what you were taught in school, outside of what you were taught within your home, yeah. or what you found in libraries or encyclopedias. I know these things sound so ancestral for certain people. But now we have all <laughs> these different lanes and opportunities, and we have storytellers and creatives like yourself that utilize okay. your platform and your canvas to paint these pictures that, yeah, everybody loves the finish of it, right? Because it looks fly, they want to wear it. But the beauty of it evolves yeah. when they find out the in-depth storytelling that you provide on that and the learnings that can come from that. You're providing and feeding people with food mm -hmm. in a way that they're going to consume it and they're going to be educated and more informed mm -hmm. to then be a better version of themselves and become a better what? Community. 
So all that you're doing ties mm-hmm. right back in to one another makes so much sense. And I'm so happy that you're going through this process of evolution to get to this point, to be able to, to do this. So, mm-hmm. yep. no, please. When, I and you know, when I talk about the rise, you know, I want to talk about the rise of other independent product creators and designers. And uh, why are we seeing mm-hmm. such a movement behind figures such as yourself? Because I think there's a lot of these independents that are showing up, which I think is great, but I'd love for you to provide your POV on why you think this is happening at such a, as a rate that it is and what makes this climate so ripe for it, right? And why are brands so much more open now? Brands are way more open to partner mm-hmm. with the likes of yourself. Why, why do yeah. you think that is? Well, I, I think it has, it goes back to community, it goes back to culture, fair, fair. It goes to the internet. You know, we, a, lot of, a lot of the up and coming brands that don't have really big backings, what we do have is the Damn. support of our communities. You know, where you have certain brands that's huge that, you know, have a hard time selling certain items and hitting certain projections. Meanwhile, you have these pockets of brands in California, Chicago, and New York, where they might not be on everybody's radar, but truth be told, they drop something, they can make a million dollars a day on Shopify. People wouldn't even know. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that's one thing that I think is associated with like these independent pop-up shops and the internet brought a lot of people together. I know that sounds crazy. Cause like people need to go back outside and like experience. Like I love, I love, I love, I come from a generation of real life mm-hmm. and internet, you know, it just is what it is, you know? Um, so I see both sides of it, but uh, yeah, you know, I think for me, even when prior to signing with new balance, we didn't know that it was going to happen. You know, I was coming off of a, of a, a bad situation with another brand. And, um, you know, it was complex Commons in Chicago. And I think New Balance, you know, a couple of guys in, within town for, from New Balance. And they were just mm-hmm. trying to see who got the city on lock. You know, All-Star Weekend. All-Star Weekend 2020 was happening in Chicago. They were just doing some market research. Let's see who actually got Chicago on lock. And, you know, I, I know again, I, I look at myself like currency. I'm under, I'm like an underground rapper. If you know, you That's know. Right. If you don't, I'm not offended. You know, I, I love being in the position I am. But they came to Chicago. They came to Compass Con. You know? That's right. I'm the fucking mayor. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't know, you don't. But they saw I had a line all day. I had four of the booths with my other brands. Though All my all my brands had lines. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, so it just, it's not one of those things that you can quantify if that's you right. don't know, you have to be there to, to see it. That's with like me and a lot of other brands, like they popping. Um, so, you know, I think um, really we just in a different time. We in a different time where a lot of brands can that's cultivate right. their own communities. Um, a lot of brands, you don't really need a lot of big brands too, because again, I want to talk about, I know, I know a couple brands that's probably not on a lot of people's radar. They drop a t-shirt, they're doing 400,000 in a drop. You know what I'm saying? When a brand come their way, like, yo, we want to sign y'all. We're going to give y'all the bullshit deal. They can look at what they've done without the brand, and they'd be like, we don't need that, you know? You know, back in the day, I'm not going to say no names. It's my whole title of this podcast. <laughs> Joe's not going to say no names. But, um, I was telling one of my OGs that I was, yo, I got Adidas to collab, and they paying me. He was like, they paying you? We did a collab with Adidas, and then they, nah, back in the early 2000s, That's right. you were just happy to get. That's right. 30 shoes. So you can pay for that. You better be grateful. I was a little offended by that because, like, what you mean I better be grateful? They damn near, yeah, they paying me, you know, for my service. So I just think the times have changed. Um, we have more access to information, um, and it just makes it easier for a brand to say no to certain stuff because we have our own community. Yeah, that's and, and, and I think in that there's this realization of your value, right? We're, we're in a place yeah. where we're realizing our value and our significance and the mm-hmm. authenticity around it, which is a beautiful, beautiful, empowering thing on so many levels. Because just think about yeah. the people who look like you, like me or us, and look mm-hmm. up or to mm-hmm. us, what that does for them. That's inspiration. 
that's mm-hmm. inspiration that helps unlock yep. the greatness within them to think, oh, I, I could do that too then. I got these ideas, these things that I want to do or I want to bring to the world that mm-hmm. I too can get after, which is beautiful. And so I love mm-hmm. that picture that you painted on the time that we're in now, right? And the why with these young creators being able to do it on their own. For you, is there a golden era mm-hmm. though of fashion that, that you can look back on or think that this was a moment that just set everything off? Different from the question I asked you earlier for you, right? It's like, but from a fashion standpoint, is there is there or was there a golden era? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And you, I mean, I know you can speak to a lot of this, this part, but what I will say is, um, I know there's this whole topic now, streetwear is dead and high fashion is ruining streetwear. And you hear so many, you know, um, buzz words and, and just titles of, but what I will say is one thing that I would say about 2005. Absolutely. For me, yeah. I know everybody have different, like, you know, but for me, from like 2005 to like 2011, oh my God, it was just like, oh, you got on the hundreds? You got on the hundreds? Like, oh shit, mm. we're part of a community. Oh, you got on BBC? Where the hell did you get that BBC from? We're part of a community. Um, This is before, you know, obviously it was the internet was around, duh, but it was just like so uh, in its infant stages of what it was going to become. But you have to search a little bit more uh, to be individual, I would say. You know what I'm saying? So if you go to a party, you can kind of point out those individuals at this party that's on the same type of shit I'm on. Oh, okay, cool, mm-hmm. he got on SBs. Cool, he got on fucking the starter hat. Cool, he's rocking, uh, yeah. fucking, um, you know, it was just like those, so like that was, uh, um, I don't know, we're never going to get that again, but that era of just like, we all um, like minded shit because oh you got on baby right. get that from that website like oh shit it's fake it was just like access was just so denied but it was kind of cool um so it was just like you were able to make friends with people and I'm talking about from a working at leaders with the kids that work at St. Alfred with the kids that work at RSVP it was just like we sharing what we heard about stored in Japan like we staring like who got the best denim right now. We sharing, like, you heard that Pharrell got a fucking uh, mm-hmm. waffle bag, and they, you know, over there, we got a cop. It was just like, shit was so cool and pure. And I think internet ruined that, you know what I'm saying? Because you could just That's right. buy the shit on Grilled, or you could just, like, it's just it's just easier now. So that golden era of just, like, friendships because of fashion yeah, was you just, know, like, I, mean, I think part of that, you mentioned something about accessibility. I, I think, to your point, everything wasn't accessible then. Like, I remember you literally had to go to Japan to get baked. Yeah. You know, and, and there was yep. there was a yep. whole yep. experience around procuring that that was different. And you're right. When you saw somebody else with them, it was like an yep. instant connection. Oh, you get it. You get down. When did you go to Japan to get yours or where did you get yours from? <laughs> and it was it was almost like a love language. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Which is amazing. Yep. Um, so I, I've, I felt every moment mm-hmm. of, of, of that era that you're talking about in that mindset o- on the business side. What are the biggest business lessons that you've learned in your pursuit of bringing your design vision to work to the world? Oh man, I could talk <laughs> three hours about that, man. I mean, just a lot, you know, oh um, man. Um, working with brands, right? You know, like even how a sneaker deal is, is worked out, like, right? Like, um, design fee versus royalties versus um having the money up having the money mm-hmm. to purchase your shoes uh what what accounts get your product um how do you scale okay cool now i can sell 20,000 shoes damn now it's a business That's right. of selling 20,000 shoes now i need a warehouse to warehouse the 20,000 shoes now I need a team that can ship the twenty thousand shoes. Now That's I need right. the capital That's to right. pay for twenty thousand shoes. So come independent. I'm super independent. Still, I want to re preach that. I'm right. not saying it's the right thing for everybody, but the more people I talk to, like that, you got four partners. <laughs> no, not me. Um, but um, I think that's a whole part of the game. Learning, you know, um, employees like 
you know, as we grow, you got to think about it. Now everybody looking around like, okay, now it's, a, it's raise time. Yeah. Uh, now it's time to, like, the art of negotiating That's with right. people that you love. All art. That shit, like, That's right. nobody prepared me for that. You know, so learning yeah, how man. to be a good boss. Um, that's you know because you can't be Joe Fresh Goods Not at all. isn't just me. You know, I'm just Joe. I'm Joe of Joe Fresh Goods. I gotta get the my art team, my production team, um, my commercials. That's a whole team. So you know, I want to be the best um, boss I can be, and that you know that um you you. I'm a creator, you know, because so, so some that's why you see all these stories come out. I'm not gonna say no names of all these people being, you know, coming out as being terrible leaders because you know you're not, you can't take you can't just take care of yourself when you're trying to continue something that mm -hmm. has legs to grow. You know, I took a lot a lot of money that I, I've earned from my brand. I could have bought Ferraris and chains and all that shit, but nah, let me reinvest that back in my company. Let me continue to look at my employees and identify those that deserve a raise. Let me continue to hire. Let me get a, a COO. Let me go. These are That's things right. that I didn't know I needed. The fuck is a COO? What's a CMO? Why am I paying for that? But in order to continue to grow, you need those things right. to, to be successful. So I think, um, what do you mean I need to pay my account this much a month? For what? No. Fuck IRS. No. no. Good for you. No, no, no. So it's just like, those are things that we are not often taught. You know, I wanted to make viral clothes. I wanted to make cool shoes. And the fact that I am, de am deciding to be independent, it is a lot of pressure on me. And it is a lot of more work on me and my team because, again, I don't, um, yeah. it's me and my team, you know. So, but, you know, it's a lot of big different lessons. I could talk about brand deals. I could talk about, you know, it's a lot, but overall, it's been no, a big and, and it, journey. And that's exactly what it is, right? It's a, it's a journey, and I go back to the word of evolution, and you're continuing to evolve. And I, and I hope you don't put too mm -hmm. much pressure on yourself in terms of not knowing what you don't know, um, because you're going to be a constant mm -hmm. work in progress, and you're going to continue to learn and be informed of new things. So this is not going to stop. You just have an awareness and a tolerance to be open to learning and growing from it. So that's the beauty. And you have to continue yeah. in that space um, because it's only going to help you and everyone around you become better. And we need you to be open to that growth. So I'm happy that you're going through this, this process. And within that, you know, like you said, there's been so many products and things that you've worked on. I, I wonder, is there a holy grail mm -hmm. of a product category or brand that you would love to have the opportunity to eventually work on or with. Oh wow! <laughs> I didn't read that question. <laughs> Look, we got to keep you it. on your toes, and this is also the art of manifestation. Yeah. We're gonna put these words into the universe. Yeah. Um, not even the being too trendy. I, I'm gonna be at a. I want to okay. be at a big fashion house. Okay. In about two years. Um. I'm spending, I've, I've been spending the last two years really um, fine tuning my cut and sew program. Um, I'm I'm amazed how far our t shirts, mm -hmm. hats, and hoodies took me, but I'm very um, intrigued and it's my passion to give the world um, some of my ideas via furniture or via, via different type of objects that's not apparel. So I think, you know, I think over the next two, three years, People are going to see Joe Fresh Goods from a uh, from just di different categories, you know. Um, but that's 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 the big thing I think is just like because um, I mean I've worked with like now to be honest with you now, um, I don't really do too many collabs, you know, um, because it's just like the power of you know the power of saying mm. no. I think early on um, I did a lot because I just wanted to get in the door, uh, but now that I'm in that door, relatively speaking. I get to be mm -hmm. very um, picky about my what what my name is on, you know, and I I think um, just touching on that a little bit more, just so you know, people and young kids can understand. Like I tell this story all the time. I I in 2020, 2021 actually, when every when every brand was just like super, we need to find black designers and we need to find ways to give back, and you know, I got some of the biggest offer of my mm -hmm. life. 
you know, mm-hmm. to do some bullshit, you know. Um, I'm very proud of myself and my team for turning a lot of that stuff down, all of it down, really. You know, I wanted to focus on partners that really believe in me, uh, partners that mm-hmm. invested in my growth. And uh, that's all I really care about. You know, I think what's meant to happen will happen. Um, I, I love the I love where I'm at right now. Um, it's a few brands that I would love to do something with, but I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever come my way. Is, no, whatever God has for way, you, whatever God has for you. And I see him continuing right. to work for you um, and you being able to, you know, be a vessel uh, of of his work, which which okay. is beautiful. And outside of, you know, are you inspired by others outside of the industry? Is there anybody that you're inspired by? Outside of the industry? Um, damn, because I hate what artists say they're not inspired by nobody because <laughs> that's a bu- some bullshit. They're not inspired by nobody. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired by certain people business you know i'm inspired by like perfect example i mean i'm really inspired um by how like lebron Man. and randy and rich and like like the fuck all y'all like you uh, like i watched the old clip of them like in the like, bnt rap city clip of uh, something like that or uh, just all them youngest hill lebron was saying like this is my account right this is my manager this is my and they all still making money together and on their own um and so, on their own like exactly Exactly. So, like, it'd be moments like that, you know? I'm inspired by, by how certain people do business. Um, I'm inspired by how certain people conduct themselves. Um, yeah, but it's really random, though, you know what I'm saying? I, obviously, I pay attention to trends and what's happening in, in, in the world, you know? Um, but, um, no, nah, it's not really a person. It's more so moments or yeah. how people act or, you know... It's, It'd be little moments like that where it's just like, oh, that's inspired. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to try to apply it over to what we have going on. Or, you know, so, yeah, it's been things like that coming up. You know, being inspired by black-owned brands, you know what I'm saying, in, in this uh-huh. the fashion industry. You know what I'm saying? I tell James Whitney this story all the time, but, like, I remember be walking around Magic Trading Show, like, just looking at all the big dogs, like, hoping one day that they'll, like, I'll be in these rooms to be able to talk to them and shit. Um, so it's like, I, I just remember a lot of people that's like peers now that, um, I was just like, that's right. You know, was running behind them, trying to figure out how they're doing what they're doing. You know, now and I'm like, I'm so no glad you brought up James so, because I think know? he's another example of somebody who's doing amazing, amazing work in this space and being a reflection of change uh-huh. and using his platform as well yeah. to kind of shape that in, yeah. in a really, really beautiful yeah. and more importantly, authentic way unapologetically doing yeah. it on his terms and his terms being the terms of ensuring that the right stories are being told and the, the right people are being utilized mm-hmm. and highlighted. It, it, it really is mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. So I, I want to applaud him as well. And, but you know, the yes. LeBron example that you gave, yes. we, we've talked about, I had another guest talk about that some time ago. And I'm hoping a story is done on that one day you know, outside of all the amazing accolades mm-hmm. uh, around LeBron from a on court and off court, I think one of the beautiful things is the rise of the unit together, right? And how yep. Yep. the unit remained throughout the journey and the learning process. You know, no, nobody was dropped mm-hmm. off because yep. they made a mistake or because they didn't have all the tools and we can get somebody else who has all the tools and experience. It was like, nah. Let us all take the time to be able to acquire that and continue to be a work in progress mm-hmm. to develop. So I'm so glad that you said that as an inspiration to you, because I'm sure as you're building your team, the hope is that you're taking that same mindset into pouring into your team, which is yep. awesome. So, you know, we, we usually yep. close the session with a question around, you know, we, we, we use the analogy of seeds and, you know, planting of seeds and watering them. And you mm-hmm. talked about so many different seeds that inspired you. I, I would love to get from you, what are the three seeds that you'd want to leave with the stewards of culture moving forward? Like those three important things that you think would be critical. Uh, man, eh. I would say ownership, eh. um, love, 
family. Absolutely. And I'm speaking no, for myself. So I want to say leading with ownership, leading with love, and leading with your family. And family could be That's right. Doesn't That's have right. to be blood, you know what I'm saying? Um family could be your team, family could be your community. Um, love is just your heart. I think that God blesses Man. people that bless others. Um, so for me, it's just like those are three things. You know, I'm, I'm, I value ownership to a fault. You know, I want as much equity as I can. Um, so I think all three of those things for me are really key to success I love it. and just growth. I love it. Well, Joe, listen, man, you know, I, I'm so grateful that you came on and I, I will share this story that when um, I reached out to you, it, it was no hesitation from you to be on this and be a part of this, even though you made mention that you don't do podcasts for the reasons that you don't. And I, I appreciate and value you for coming on and sharing in this space because you know the goal of this platform. And so with that, um, you know, I've even learned a little bit more about you today and my respect level and more importantly, my support level for you has risen. Um, because since the day we met, it was from a place of, I gotta help him. I gotta help him. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. continue to be here to do that. And I'm gonna continue to ask you to continue to be the reflection of all the great things that you represent and the three seeds that you just mentioned and know that I'm here to continue to help you. I appreciate that. You've been a very good um, friend, you know, you help me out in need. Um, I don't know if you know, but it's not that it doesn't happen that much, you know, and I've been signed with everybody. So I think, um, whoever call, you ever need anything, um, I'm always going to be there for you because you was there for me and my team when we needed somebody like you. Appreciate you, bro. So I super appreciate you.